everybody. Welcome. Uh, I'm, you guys know I'm part of the tribe here, uh, but my name is Jim Britz. And what I want to do today is I want to share briefly our story. And then I just want to really share one thing that I think will be encouragement in the midst of times of discouragement. Is that cool? So uh, uh, in our story really quick, I'll just, um, six years ago, planted Parkside Church in North County, San Diego. And um, I was a youth pastor for 15 years at that point and was planning on doing that forever. And um, uh, I said, I was gonna be one of those guys that never sold out and planted a church. I was gonna be the youth guy, 80 years old, working with high school kids. And uh, God called me to the park behind my house at two in the morning. He actually does that a lot. And you can actually kind of look at the major points in my life and two in the morning wake up calls and go down to the park and God speaks. But uh, a couple of years ago, I just said, Hey God, I know you're here because of this church planning thing that people are coming to me about. Don't worry. I won't sell out. And I heard an audible voice from God. And he said, Jim, I'm not asking you to leave youth ministry. I'm asking you to plant a church. And uh, that's where the birth of Parkside came. And if you like parts, you love Parkside. And, um, unashamedly of all about the next generation. And, uh, and that our first four years, uh, just awesome. Really, really cool. And tons and tons of baptisms. And we planted four churches in those four years. We had a big multiplication theme from, from day one. And, uh, and then about two years ago, um, God got me up in the middle of the night. And he'd had some in between, but woke me up and went down there. And I'm like, God, well, what do you want to talk about today? And this might sound weird. This isn't like every day. This is twice a year, God, at the most, you know, where we have this relationship with God. Um, and it was just very clear. God said, I want to talk to you about disciple making. And I'm excited about all these great things that's going on with your church. Um, but you're missing the boat on what's most important. And, um, and I walked away uh, two in the morning with this huge burden on my shoulders. And when it came to making disciples to make disciples, uh, we were failing miserably. In fact, <clears throat> these are the words I heard from God is, Jim, you're doing a piss poor job at that. <laughs> so I don't know if that was him or not. Sorry, but that was the language that, that I shared. And so how do you explain to a, a staff and a church that's going really, really well, all of a sudden the lead pastor is going, man, we're failing at what's most important. And I uh, started reading lots of books on disciple making, more books probably in that season than ever before in terms of just any kind of books. And nine months into that, uh, I read my first disciple making book outside of the United States and some stories of what's going on in other parts of the world and just got addicted to, to movements. And, um, and the only time I think ever in the history of uh, reading a book and at the end of it, it says, um, if you like this book on Amazon, you should check out this one. I'm like, not a sucker for that. I'm not going to fall for that. But, but uh, it said, it had Chris's book. And I'm like, oh, that's just, that's an interesting title for uh, kind of the season I'm going through. And it had a link to the blogs. I'm like, I don't even have to buy it. I can just read. So I, uh, I bought it later. Don't worry. But um, I'm reading late at night on a Saturday, I'm preaching early the next morning, but I'm just hooked on this thing. And uh, there's a chapter in there about, um, uh, people going out to Walmart parking lot to, uh, to share their faith. That's what I did. I thought I was the only person on the planet that did that. And I was like, no way. There's other people like me. And, um, and about, I don't know, 45 minutes into this, I realized I knew Chris, I'd actually flown to Texas, uh, a couple of years before, because we had a similar mentor that bottom line told me I needed to go see this church and see what they were doing with prayer. And I'm like, Oh my goodness. And so it came at the end of it. And it said, Chris says, Hey, email me if you're interested. And I uh, email, um, this is probably one or two in the morning on a, on a Sunday, Sunday morning. I like pastors should not be doing this at this point. And, um, and Chris, I wake up in the morning and Chris had emailed me back already. Say, Jim, I remember you. And I don't know if he was telling the truth or not. I, uh, I'm like, that's awesome. He said, Hey, six weeks from now is, uh, is our next training. You need to be in it. And so I got, um, eight core leaders in our in our team to go through this training with me and you guys probably can connect with this i just so resonated with what he was saying and there was a sense of like this burden that i had been carrying at that point it was a year uh it was like okay not that we're doing anything yet but but uh but what i've been carrying this is the answer to it and i actually felt lighter as we were going through this training and uh and our team was so excited like we got to do this and started mapping out things um and I just say this. So that was a year ago. <clears throat> and uh, if you would have told me a year ago uh, where we're at now, a year later, after passionately pursuing DM, DMM movement stuff, uh, I probably wouldn't have started because uh, I would have been so I would have been discouraged by what was said. Or I would have thought, man, I am massively failing at what we're doing. Um, and uh, um, pastors like to well, at least this pastor does, likes to exaggerate on the high side. 
Um, I don't know if you guys ever do that, but um, just for a moment, let me exaggerate on the low side. So it's not as bad as I'm going to say here. Um, God's done some really cool lasting fruit, but, uh, but maybe some of you guys can resonate with some of this stuff, or if you've been doing it for a while, or you have, you're just starting, you might down the road. Um, so for us, uh, the, the, all the people that went through that training with me, there's one guy that's still walking with it. The others that would say, hey, we're DMM fans, but, uh, but definitely not, not tracking with it anymore. Um, we got super excited about reaching this very, very pipsy apartment complex called Las Palmas. And some of my friends here are like, yeah, you've heard me talk about it. This crazy story of how God led us there. And uh, man, we were just positive there was going to be hundreds of baptisms in that apartment pool. And we prayed, I don't know, hundreds of laps around this, this place and found all these potential persons of peace that we called persons of peace long before they should have been and saw some traction and COVID came and it just felt like the traction just died. Uh, and it was painful, and then it was like, I don't think it's even, we're okay to even go over there, um, and uh, um, training people, man, so excited, I thought I'd have our whole church trained a year from now, easy, no problem, and uh, every training felt like, you know, we've got a lot of people that have buy-in because of Jim, um, and, uh, and by week six, man, it's a fraction of the people that started it, um, and, uh, and discouraged in that, um, <clears throat> And uh, man, I just thought my leadership board, which is all about multiplication, right? We, we were planting a church a year at least, would be like, man, this is how you reach a city. And instead, the response was, a couple of them, that sounds cultish, like, uh, like I don't, I don't know if that's, that's what we should do, you know? And, um, and sometimes we just felt like our best things, I remember calling Chris and maybe even the board here, or this team here and saying, man, we got a person of peace, they're bringing all these people, it's going to be great. And then we show up on the day. And not even the person at peace shows up or even calls. And it's like, what the heck's happening? Right. So just a lot of tough stuff. Um, and even our DMM Gen Zero Church, uh, man, getting people fully on board and excited, um, man, it's tough. And people, as they report their numbers, just a lot of zeros when it comes to discovery uh, invitation questions. Um, so I, I just ask this. Anyone resonate with, with the second part of my story at all? All right, that's helpful. So, uh, yeah, the sense of, man, so hearing it and going, man, let's go. And then um, a year in and going, it's been really, really difficult. Um, and there's lots of reasons for, I think, motivation for why we'd want to go on this journey. Um, you know, w one is just, just hearing the vision of, man, what's going on around the world and thinking about, man, if we're going to reach our cities or our regions, man, this is, this is obviously a way it can happen. The other way it can't also could just be kind of fed up with some issues with the North American church. And it's like, this is a better way to go and shoot, read the Bible. This is what it tells us to do, you know, and you get passionate about these things. I would just say all this, all those are great. Uh, for me, the biggest thing, um, in fact, Chris says this a lot in the training. I don't think we talk about it so much in the coaching. And I think we probably just need to, because maybe even more important is the reason to do this is because God told you to. Um, and if that's not the foundation of this whole thing, like, you know, if none go with me, <laughs> I won't sing, but still I will follow, you know, this, this sense of going, man, even if this crushes my church, even if the people I thought would roll don't, uh, even if, man, I look like a fool, God, you told me to do this, and so I need to do it. Um, Francis Chan talks about the difference between even if people and only if people, you know, I'll do this only if, all these things fall in line only if these people come online only if my board says yes uh but i think we're supposed to be even if type followers and especially in this dmm journey right of, i'm doing this even if it doesn't go as i planned i'm going even if every potential person to peace ends up just being a w they won't even open up their oikos they just were friendly that's it uh and um and so here's what i could say for me a year in um while i don't i've not seen the traction that we hope would see and man i in our church planting world, man, it's just seen growth and growth and growth and have not experienced that in DMM. I, I am more passionate that this is what God's called us to than ever before. Um, and, uh, and, and more all in um, with, with what we're called to do. And it all falls back to because I'm just, it's so clear from God, he said to do this. And, that, and so it's going to be difficult, but we got we to gotta keep on going. Um, so let me walk through what this looks like a little bit for me in terms of, hey, knowing that God's called you to this and really having your motivation built on that, on that rock. And I think that needs to be built over and over and over again, not just a one-time thing that keeps on happening. Um, so I was sharing that 
our for a lot of people in our group, their number for discovery, com you know, uh, group invitations was was zero a lot of weeks, which is like, that's the same as anybody else not doing anything. Like, come on. And uh, so I called Chris and just said, hey, what do you do? And Chris said, uh, actually, they found that they had a similar issue. And I was like, what? Oh, man, I thought yours was perfect. And uh, um, and he said, here's what we found is when when we come together and do it together, the numbers go way up. And when we do it on our own, the numbers go way down. And so uh, we've been doing our, our Gen Zero church in our house and said, we've got to move this to the mission field. And, um, and so we're like, well, I think we go to Las Palmas because that's where we should go. But then that annoying passage that we've all gone through a hundred times, if you taught people in this of Luke 10 and Matthew 10, if the people don't respond, dust your feet. And I'm like, shoot, we gave nine months of this place and maybe you're supposed to go back there, but at least should be open to maybe that was a training place. And we saw people come to Christ there and some, some neat things, but, um, so there's always a second place that I felt like maybe was God would want us to go. And so last Friday I went prayer walking. I think that's one of the ways you, you figure this out. And, um, and I was just really like tough with God. And I don't know if you're supposed to be like this, but I just said, God, Hey, if we're going to go after this in this new neighborhood, um, you need to do some things. First of all, I need like all kinds of signs. And I'm, I read into stuff all over the place, but so God, those are asking me a softball pitch for you. That's easy. But also I'm going to need just in my walk this afternoon, several potential persons that are just like dropped in my lap. Like you got to show me this is where you want me to go. Um, so last, last Friday I go out and park the car and um, I'm walking and there's a park that I didn't even really know about right around the corner from where I parked. This is extremely pipsy area. Remember our church is called Parkside. And I'm like, how the heck are we trying to do stuff without a park? Oh my goodness, this is who we are. And, um, and the park's called Luz Duran, which is lasting light. I'm like, that's kind of scriptural. And, um, and walking some more, the apartment complex right next to it is uh, Casa Celeste, which is heaven's house. And I'm like, all right. And it's man, pipsier than the place we were at before. Um, I'm like, are these just signs, God? But you know what? They were that already. I'm not, I'm not moving our whole team to this place. Oh, we were looking for picnic benches. Uh, with shade because we have a couple older people that need the shade. I'm like, that's not good enough, God. What park does that have? You know, that's shade. And I'm walking along, and um, and there's a lady with her daughter. It's like six or seven, and um, her dog. And so I just go, hey, I'm walking around the neighborhood. Can I uh, pray? And can I pray for you? And she just breaks down on the spot and just goes, you want to pray for me? Yeah. I I, I go, yeah. You, you have a faith background. I don't have a faith background at all, but my life has fallen apart. And this is unbelievable that you'd ask me to pray for you. Hey, this is my name. This is my daughter's name. Um, and I'm sharing with her. So I share with her a story. She's crying with this Bible story. I'm like, we're actually trying to start churches and homes in this neighborhood. Well, if you're starting to start churches, is there a church yet? I go, well, kind of. Like, we've got a group meeting in the park this Sunday. Am I allowed to come to that? Here's my phone number. Can you get me? I mean, it's just... I said, well, you can come, but that's not the goal. Like, we're going to try to start something in your own place. But, but yeah, some relationships. I mean, just a, just a, so cool. I'm like, all right, God, but we need more than that. So then I'm walking along, and, um, and then I'm back in the park, and this other guy's there, and he's obviously a gang member, and it sure seemed like it. Sorry, that, that's, anyways. And uh, <laughs> uh, um, anyways, I go, man, can I pray for you? And he just goes, dude, that would be unbelievable. And here's the words he says. Um, my relationships are breaking down all over the place in my life. And I don't know where else to turn. That is crazy that you would, you would come up and ask you to pray for me. And um, I, my favorite story to share is the 10 lepers. And so I shared that with them. And I said, in the story, did it seem like uh, this guy got encountered, all 10 got encountered with God, but only one really turned back for more. And he said, yeah, it seems like that. I said, is it possible that God was hearing you and he brought me to you today? And he said, I think it's totally possible. And I said, all right. Are you the one or are you the nine? Oh, dang it. Well, I want to be the one. All right. So he gave me his number, gave me his address. He said, you knock on my door if, if uh, this doesn't happen. And, um, and we're connecting and, and going forward with that. So, and then we went on Sunday and, uh, and several more. And here's one of the beauties of this. Of you've got to do your DMM Gen Zero Church among the lost. So we go out there separately, but just meeting there. So we're at this picnic bench in the shade. And there's this kid named Matthew that's a high school kid sitting there. There was never some random high school kid sitting in my living room, but there was here. And, uh, and so, hey, man, you want to come do a Bible study with us? Yeah. And, uh, and this kid's so connected to the community. And he's like, man, you think God could use me to reach my family? And, 
Um, man, we had several other potential persons of peace conversations. And, and so anyways, my whole team, one of the guys said this, and no one had ever said this before without me like getting them to say it. He said, uh, Jim, I think I'm supposed to come out here during the week like I can do this on my own. Yeah, I've been telling you that for a long time. But, but the first time I think just being there, uh, you know, and like this being like, this is a weekly thing we're going to do was, was so huge. So our whole team is convinced, right? We're in, we're doing it. And if the team gets smaller, that's okay. Hey, we're, we're part of this. So um, my, my encouragement would just be, hey, is your reason for doing this? Could be a lot of things, but is it the foundation of it? Hey, God's told me. And so you could have a story from the beginning when you started, but also would say, how's God, how's God added to that story lately? And are you putting yourself in places where you're, it's clear God wants you to do this. I think that happens through prayer walking. I think that happens through going on prayer retreats regularly. Um, I, I'm trying to, on a monthly basis, get away for a day and, and take a different person with me each time and challenge them to then take a different person with them each time. And each time it's like God just speaks and goes, oh yeah, Jim, you're on the right path. So yeah, I know it's not going how you thought it was going to go, but you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and then it's huge, I think, for your team to feel the same way. Not just that they're following their leader blindly or like this seems like a good thing, but, uh, but where they've actually heard from the Holy Spirit as well. And so we tell people as we finish our last session, you're not even allowed in the DMM Gen Zero Church until you go on a prayer retreat yourself. And I'm going to put in the, the chat some questions that we um, should just. Yeah, if you scroll up there, you can see it. We just give some questions for people to work through that we say, you got to get away for a minimum of two years or two, 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 years, two hours. Uh, and. Um, and just try to hear from God. And for a lot of people, we have a church that's all brand new Christians. Uh, a two hour, something like that is like, you know, they've never done it. Um, and, uh, and the process through, but I want, I want them to convince me, hey, I think God's called me to do this. And here's how I think God's called me to do that. And for that to at least to start out being their foundation. Um, for it. And um, my, my last thing would just be, I think this is scriptural too. When you think about the apostle Paul, I think maybe my favorite, like, scene a list of stories in scripture would be paul and how he planted the church in philippi and um you just think about it like you know he wanted to go everywhere else and god keeps stopping him and then sends this guy in the middle of the night from macedonia you know that, that paul paul wasn't in philippi necessarily because that's where he thought was the place he should go he was there because god told him and um and then he's he's on his route to to go pray somewhere and that's where he finds lydia a person of peace he's on his route again to pray somewhere else and that's where he finds this demon possessed girl that i think's a person of peace. And then he's in prison, praying in the middle of the night and singing worship songs. And that's where they find their next person of peace. And so it's not just, you know, multiply extraordinary prayer because hey, that's what brings about movements. I think it's what, I think it's what we need if we're not going to give up. The God's got to keep on speaking in, into our lives. So I wanted to end before we uh, break in our groups, um, just to have some mutual encouragement on this. And uh, I'd love answers, let's say no longer than 30 seconds, so it's gotta be quick. Uh, how has God told you to, and let's just use like four or five people, so this won't go for a long time. How has God told you that you're supposed to do this? Like if you had to share your story, um, and it could be specifically why DMM, or why you're in the specific place that you're at doing DMM, but uh, just so we get some other examples of how God speaks to us, and how that can be the foundation of what we're at, because I think, uh, I th all the good stuff happens if we if we last for a long time, and the devil wants to do everything we can to to stop us. Um, and so, uh, man, we got to be encouraged regularly that this is God telling us. So, anyways, anyone anyone want to share briefly, or if not, we'll go to groups. But anyone have quick stories to share? I'll, I'll go. Thanks, Lee. Um, I uh, just went through some tough ministry circumstances and I second guess myself all the time. I'm an Enneagram six, so I'm right there uh, doing, you know, always wondering if I'm doing the right thing. And um, I just uh, inherited a way of doing church that I try to keep doing. And then when things kind of fell apart here, um, I had the clarity that there isn't anything else to do that this is this is it and
So. Louis, I feel the exact same way. And uh, I, the exact moment you're having now, I, I've had so many times. God, I'd rather not do this. <laughs> what you tell me to do, but, but I have to, because you've told me to. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing else. This is it, you know? <clears throat> and um, so it's, it's just been that clear to me, even though uh, on paper, it looks like a pretty big failure so far. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't, I've never felt more confident in what we're doing or where we're headed, but, <clears throat> you know, it <clears throat> certainly doesn't feel like I'm the next Andy Stanley. <laughs> so anyway sorry uh, <laughs> to get emotional awesome. thank you for sharing i went to a park and god told me i was doing a piss oh never mind um <laughs> uh, you know across our four campuses i couldn't name one person who was making disciples, who was making disciples, who was making disciples. And God just moved on my heart in a similar way as you, Jim, and just said, um, this isn't what I called you to and made it crystal clear. And so we just did a complete turnaround and are leading the church a hundred percent into what God's told us to do. Mm. It's cool. Yeah, my team, we were working like crazy to put on the show. And, and you know, of course, our tagline had something about making disciples in it, right? That's what most churches have. But we sat down one day and we said, we are killing ourselves. And are we really, are we really making disciples? Or are we just putting on events? We felt like just event planners, uh, whether it was Sunday or outreach events or whatever. But are we really making disciples? And so that led us down a path of, of just prayer and at, at seeking God. And he, we found something called um, WIG, Wildly Important Goal, out of the uh, 40X book um, that is meant for businesses and, and trying to focus on, on moving those things that really matter. And that led us to WIG uh, um, with Chris Galanos, WIG DMM or, or WIG Take DMM. And so that we kind of stumbled on, on that with discipleship. Uh, we were, you know, planning out some discipleship steps, wondering if we were on the right path, but then, you know, found, found Chris's stuff and then uh, uh, a lot of the other books as well that some of you all have read and, and just kind of opened the door for us to follow this path. And it's been, we call it a bullet train. We got on, we're not sure where it was going or how we were going to get off, but it's, it's taken us somewhere fast. Mm, that's cool. Thank you, David. <clears throat> 